What is a semiconductor device? I know it can sound extremely intimidating, but it has been a large part of our digital advances and is a huge contributor to the fourth industrial revolution we currently see ourselves in. In today's video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about semiconductor technology and why it has become such an important part of our digital world and society as a whole. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. What is a semiconductor? First things first, what is a semiconductor? Conductor. A semiconductor possesses very specific electrical properties. A substance that does not conduct energy is called an insulator, and a substance that does conduct electricity is called a conductor. We mention this because semiconductors lie somewhere in between the two. Electronic discrete components, such as transistors and diodes, along with integrated circuits ICs, are made of semiconductors. Integrated circuit chips consist of two or more devices, explaining the hundreds to the billions manufactured and interconnected on a single semiconductor wafer. Some of the most common elemental semiconductors that are used in many of our devices nowadays are silicon and germanium. Semiconductors have replaced vacuum tubes in the majority of today's electronic devices. They use electrical conduction in the solid state rather than thermonic emission or gaseous state that lies within a vacuum. Semiconductors have quickly become essential for the majority of electronic appliances, along with social infrastructures that support our day-to-day -day life. The materials are very useful because the way they behave can be easily manipulated by deliberate additions of impurities. This otherwise known as doping. The conductivity can be controlled by an electronic or magnetic field mechanical deformation of a doped monocrystalline silicon or exposure to light or heat, thus making semiconductors excellent sensors. This also makes semiconductors much more sustainable than other forms of electrical operation. The most common semiconductor device to date in the world is the MOSFET, otherwise known as Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor, or MOS Transistor for short. As of 2013, there have been billions of MOS transistors manufactured daily. The rate of semiconductor production has increased by at least 9.1% since 1978, and in 2018, shipments of semiconductors exceeded 1 trillion, meaning that over 7 trillion have been made and shipped out to date. Semiconductor Device Material The most popular and widely used semiconductor material used in the majority of devices is silicon. Silicon is a combination of relatively simple processing, a low raw material cost, and a useful temperature range, which makes it the best compromise among competing materials. When used in a semiconductor device, manufacturing is is fabricated into bullion that are large enough in diameter, which allow for the production of 300 millimeter wafers. A wafer is a thin slice of semiconductor used for the fabrication of integrated circuit, which is a crucial part of the entire process. Germanium is the second most popular and widely used material in semiconductor devices. It was widely used in early semiconductor production, but has since slowed down, overtaken by silicon instead. Germanium has thermal sensitivity unlike its counterpart silicon, which explains why it isn't that commonly used nowadays. Today, germanium is often alloyed alongside silicon for use in very high-speed devices. Gallium arsenide is a commonly used material for high-speed devices. However, it has been difficult to form large diameter boils of this material, making it less desirable as a first choice of material. This limits the wafer diameter to sizes drastically smaller than silicon wafers, which means mass production of gallium arsenide devices are much more costly than silicon-powered devices. Some of these less common materials used in semiconductors include silicon carbide, which is a raw material used for blue light-emitting diode LED, and and is currently being investigated whether it could be used in semiconductor devices that could withstand incredibly high operating temperatures and environments that are present with significant levels of ionizing radiation. Various idiom compounds are also being used in LEDs and solid-state laser diodes. History of the semiconductor device or technology Semiconductors have been used within the electronics field for quite a while now and only continue to evolve and adapt to the digital changes and advances. In the 20th century, semiconductors were commonly used as detectors in radios and in a device called a cat's whisker detector. This consisted of a piece of crystalline mineral, typically lead sulfide, with a fine wire touching its surface. These detectors, as you can imagine back in the 20th century, were somewhat troublesome as they required the operator to move the whisker, small tungsten filament, along the surface of a galena, lead sulfide, or carborundum crystal until it suddenly started working. However, over a period of a few hours or days, it was completely random, so you would need to repeat the process again. In World War II, radio receivers were made to operate at higher frequencies than ever before at the time. The traditional two base radio receivers were no longer sufficient for the task at hand. The introduction of the cavity magnetron in 1940 during the Tizard mission resulted in a high demand and pressing need for practical high-frequency amplifiers. 
This is where the cat wizard comes back into play. After not being used for many, many years, a scientist decided to dig one up and try it out. And he found it works significantly better than the two base systems. Russell Ohl, the scientist who rediscovered the cat whisker, was intrigued why it worked so well. He spent the majority of 1939 trying to grow more pure versions of the crystal. He found that the higher quality of the crystal, the finicky random behavior would disappear, but so did the crystal's ability to operate as a radio detector. One day he found the purest of crystals. However, it had a huge crack down the middle. Nonetheless, when he exited the room, the crystal worked perfectly, and when he came back into the room, it would stop. Old discovered that the behavior of the device was controlled by the amount of light in the room. The more light there was, the more conductance in the crystal and vice versa. After further investigation, he discovered that the crack in the crystal had very slightly different amounts of impurity. One side which had more added electrons, making it a conductor. The other had impurities that wanted to bind these electrons, thus making it what we now know as an insulator. The conjunction of the two parts of the crystal created a solid state diode, and this concept soon became known as semiconduction. And this is where the very essence of the semiconductor was born. Common semiconductor devices, phototransistor, diac, gun diode, LED, laser diode, impact diode, solar cell, Zen dial, biopolar transistor, Darlington transistor, field effect transistor, Hall effect sensor, magnetic field sensor, photocoupler, just to name a few. The largest semiconductor factory in the world. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is the largest contract semiconductor factory in the world. It has quickly passed the likes of Samsung and Intel, some of its biggest rivals in the game. Recently, the company reached $66.40 per share, which means a market capitalization of around $313 billion. Insane, right? I can't even imagine imagine that kind of money. This was bound to happen due to the advanced technology and the sheer size of the factory. However, it was still a huge achievement for Taiwan. The firm develops chips, mostly all for major companies, some of which include Nvidia, Qualcomm, AMD, plus countless more. TSMC has also revealed that they will be manufacturing Apple Silicon for ARM-based MacBooks. These are set to launch in the future, so it will be very interesting to see how the partnership between the two companies plays out. TSMC pride themselves on their 2 microns to 5 nanometer chips. They are also the first ever foundry to produce and provide 7 in 5 nanometer production capabilities, with this being applied to the new Apple A14 and Apple M1 SoC. TSMC is also the very first and only semiconductor factory that provides commercially extreme ultraviolet lithotherapy processes in the industry. The company uses ultraviolet patterning, which enables more acute circuits to be implemented onto the silicone, something that no other semiconductor factory in the world can achieve. In comparison to the previous technology node, N7 Plus Ultraviolet offers up to 15 to 20% increased transistor density, plus a 10% reduction in the consumption of power. The volume increase present in the N7 has been the fastest ever to hit the market, much faster than the 10NM or the 16NM. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company was founded in 1987 by Morris Chang. Chang is a highly intelligent Taiwanese-American businessman who studied at Harvard University, but then transferred to Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and graduated with a bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering. After working alongside many professionals in his field, and being a part of smaller semiconductor businesses, he saw the increasing value in businesses outsourcing their manufacturing capabilities. In 1987, he founded TSMC, which soon became one of the world's largest and most profitable chip makers. Chang helped pave the way for all of the technological advances we see today in the fourth industrial revolution. Chang retired in 2018 after 31 years of leading TSMC and handed the company over to Mark Liu and CC Wei, both high-ranking TSMC leaders. TSMC has been listed on the stock exchange since 1993 and in 1977, it became the very first Taiwanese company to make its way onto the New York Stock Exchange, a huge moment for the company, gaining them global recognition. Since 1994, TSMC has had a compound annual growth rate of an impressive 17.4% in their revenue and a 16.1% in earnings. This is extremely impressive and shows just how powerful and advanced this company has been from the get-go. The majority of leading semiconductor companies include Apple Incorporated, Broad.com, Marvel, MediaTek, NVIDIA, Advanced Micro Device, and Qualcomm are actually customers of TSMC along with a handful of emerging companies. Even leading programmable logic devices companies such as Linux and Altera have used TSMC foundry devices. This shows just how powerful TMC has become in the semiconductor manufacturing world and has had a huge impact on the world of technology since the 1990s. Some of the largest manufacturing companies including Samsung and Intel have even outsourced some of their productions from TSMC. As you can tell, the semiconductor completely changed the way digital and electronic devices function and has become extremely important in this day and age. Without semiconductors, we would not have the majority of appliances and devices we use daily, and factories would not be able to function as they would not have the technology necessary to evolve and adapt.
adapt to the changing times. That is all we have for you today, but make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on another video.